Well, a very good evening to you. Welcome to Carrow Road. Uh, make the most of this. This will be the only FA Cup video verdict you get from me this season. Uh, Norwich City uh, going out at the third round stage. I think that's for the sixth successive season. They've lost here 1-0 to League One uh, leaders Portsmouth. And they've lost due to an Andre Gray goal. Uh, sorry, not Andre Gray goal. Andre Green goal uh, in the 94th minute, I think it was. So, taste of Norwich's own medicine. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Um, effectively, Norwich went for broke. They were down to 10 men after the 15th minute, so a fair old chunk. Um, by the last exchanges, they were uh, matching Portsmouth up at the back and um, they chucked players forward to try and win the game in injury time. As it so happened, Portsmouth broke really well, had men over, and Andre Green at the second, I think, attempt pretty much managed to poke, poke the ball uh, past Michael McGovern, who was in goal. It was a very well taken goal given the circumstances. Um, and uh, full disclosure, a bit of honesty here, I laughed, sort of went, ha, yay, <laughs> possibly, um, at the goal, because to be honest, uh, who wants a midweek replay at Portsmouth? Uh, a few days before they play on a Friday night here at home to Birmingham in a very tough, possibly key run of championship fixtures. Now, I will tell you that view and I readily admit that it's a disappointment <laughs> for some of you because some people want the FA Cup to be something. They want their, their club to have a great FA Cup run. The atmosphere in here was great. It was, a, it was a great game. The FA Cup can be wonderful. It can be magical. But let's be honest, and I will tell you my view on this, Norwich City's league form, their league campaign this season, has been magical. If that continues, then you get 46 games of magic as opposed to just a few. And let's be honest, it's something Norwich can win as opposed to the FA Cup where, yeah, you know, maybe one in 200 years Norwich might win the thing, but they've never got past the semi-finals in their history. So, you know, other seasons Norwich can have a real go at the FA Cup. Obviously, they have done and failed, but you know what? I'm not going to worry about this year. And I personally don't think you should either um so that's fair enough obviously a really changed side that Daniel Farker put out today and I'll, I'll run through that in a bit there is a disappointment there that probably it would have been a much changed side that did actually in reality go and play in any replay and of course the fourth round um so there are going to be a few players who aren't going to get that game time and that is probably the big downside of this um, and that will be a tricky one for, for Daniel Farker to play out because he has got a big, he has got a strong squad and he's going to need to try and keep some of these players ticking over um, with some pretty high intensity training, which is something they've managed in recent weeks before Christmas. But, you know, they're going to have to think about that in the, in the championship weeks ahead. But of course, Norwich have got injuries too. People will get opportunities. You know what the championship is like. So in terms of the team that uh, Daniel Farker played, uh, Michael McGovern, uh, I think we know all about Michael McGovern to know what his strengths and weaknesses are and we didn't see anything different there. Uh, Daniel still played a 4-2-3-1, which is as we would expect because he wouldn't want to necessarily change the shape. Felix Paslak, I thought, did OK at right back. I quite like him, to be honest. If Max Aaron's got injured, I would still want Felix to start because I think there is something there. His decision-making was a bit wry, but he does kind of get himself out of issues with his pace and he's got a good use of the ball a lot of the time. So I do quite like Felix. Um, Christoph Zimmerman was immense at the back. It was brilliant. A couple of really good um, uh, blocks uh, just a few yards from goal at the back. Uh, ben Godfrey started at left back because he was alongside Grant Hanley, who got sent off after 15 minutes. And then Ben Godfrey came into centre path. Ben Godfrey, I, I like. He's a great guy who's good really to speak to him for the first time after a game as well and that will all be on pinkin.com had a massive gash down the back of his achilles on one leg as well so he's obviously been through it a bit too um ahead of them we had uh, it was uh, tom tribal who did okay in his shielding role he, he's having a quiet patch tom tribal it's it's kind of difficult to put our finger on it because i think about the guy who came in and looks so good in his first few first sort of six months really and, and and apart from some of the injuries real class not he's being quiet he's not being an issue it's just you know you feel like he's playing within himself a little bit which which is an interesting it might be a confidence issue too and rustiness he's not getting a run of games and maybe he knows he's not going to get one at the moment uh, Kenny McLean came in played the full 90 minutes first time we've seen him in a, for a first team game since his um, injury in August he was probably the pick of the new guys to come in he will definitely be pushing for involvement over the coming weeks I'm sure because there was a lot in that performance to like from Kenny today and he worked really hard um, then ahead of them Dennis Shrebani was at the sort of number 10 role it struggled if I'm honest it, it 
we, the game was at his level, um, which given Norwood spent most of it with 10 men against 11, um, it's a little bit disappointing. I thought Todd Cantwell was fantastic, especially in the second half. End product possibly a little bit lacking at times, but uh, you know, I thought Todd is looking really confident and, and playing with, with great energy and, 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 and life. And it's, it's nice to watch Todd play at the moment and plus he's got a new haircut I much prefer it got rid of all those locks I don't care if it was deliberate an accident a hair malfunction whatever Todd best thing you've done so far brilliant keep that hair do not grow it again much prefer it uh, though he did look like uh, is it seven off of um, Stranger Things just an observation see if you agree with me um, is it seven can't remember eleven I need to watch it again. Doesn't matter. I'm losing track. Um, who else do we then have? We have, then have Ben Marshall, who is a curious case. I'm going to write about him in my six things, I think. Um, ben worked really hard, actually, and he really took ownership at times, drove with the ball. And you can see the game he loves to play. But the more I see him play, the more I think the game he loves to play doesn't fit into the way Daniel Farker wants Norwich to play. And I think that's a bit of a contradiction. And I also think that's why we haven't seen Ben play so often this year. This year. That's my view. Uh, and then Jordan Rhodes up top. Um, seemed to be a little bit more isolated than, say, Tamu has been. And maybe that was just a sign of how disjointed Norwich were, given it was a, a side put together, of course, unlike the, the regular output of, of the championship game. So it was a tough, tough old grind for, for Jordan. Um, Norwich didn't create so many click-up chances really uh, it was the odd, odd moment but not really they did play better um, in the second half and they had spells and they were the better side I thought even though they were a man down um, it's fair to say that Portsmouth for a side who are clear at the top of League One um, were a bit of a disappointment actually if I'm brutally honest I, I would they needed a lot of work maybe I don't know if they played a little bit more negatively um, and, and to try and counter what Norwich could do with 11 men but um, yeah it was disappointing it makes me think there's a you know between the top of championship and league one is it's a big difference in terms of uh, quality and, and, and the way the, ba the ball is played and the intensity and I know I'm saying this while Portsmouth have won but I mean it was kind of smash and grab really all I will say is Jamal Lowe by far and away their standout player um, someone I liked a lot and I, you know I wouldn't be too adverse to seeing him playing um, here in the championship because um, he had a lot about him yeah, I liked him quite a lot um, so we'll see where Portsmouth go um, their fans it's like they've had a major um, that was nice hopefully it wasn't anything offensive it's alright Jordan Rhodes has turned up so they've all got distracted um, yeah the Portsmouth fans I think they'd all been high on sugar this was probably the biggest game they've played in about five or six years probably since they won the FA Cup so you know fair enough they enjoyed it they had a great time and, and made a lot of noise brilliant noise I think there was probably two and a half thousand of them good on them they'll of course have a lot of uh, excitement ahead of them over the rest of the season too I'm sure so uh, fair play uh, it's, a, it's a big old club and probably deserves to be playing at a far higher level um, I'm sure they'll, they'll do what they need to do to sort themselves out. And they've got a great manager in Kenny Jacket, who, if they do go up, will certainly be able to, um, I'm sure, wrap up a side that can deal with the championship one way or another. Uh, the only thing I haven't talked about is Grant Hanley sending off. Um, initially, when I saw it, I thought it was harsh. Uh, it was quite clear that he came in thinking he'd just be able to clear the ball and he didn't get there first. And Curtis um, got kind of taken out. He would have been through on goal. I don't really buy the argument necessarily that a player would have come across and covered so, ultimately, I think that was probably the right decision. Well, no, it was the right decision. Uh, there was a possible question mark over whether it was for the actual tackle, which was pretty ropey, or um, being the last man and denying an obvious goal-scoring opportunity, which I think it was. Uh, and I think that was, and I, as far as I believe, that is why he was sent off. Though that only means a one-game ban, which means that he will miss um, the West Brom game, of course, away on, on Saturday. So that's not too bad, really. One game, take it. He probably, in truth, wouldn't have started anyway. And Norwich are actually pretty well off at centre-back at the moment. So uh, no other injury issues from what we could see, which is good, of course. There was obviously a positive injury bulletin as well over on for Friday at Colney. Uh, Alex Tetty, Jamal Lewis both will be fit for uh, the West Brom game. Marco Stieperman should be ready for Birmingham, which is the following weekend. And Emmy Buendia is, um, I believe, doing very well on his rehab and might not be too far away from one of those two games, possibly both. I don't know. I could be being overly optimistic, but fingers crossed because that would be um, brilliant to have Emmy back in there and the options that he provides. Um, so that's all good news. Of course, West Brom is a massive game. It's a massive run coming up now for Norwich City in the Championship. Loads to look forward to. Some really big games ahead. And um, we'll have to see how it all how it all plays out but um, for now we can um, 
digest the FA Cup, put it to bed and uh, move on to league matters. Let's concentrate on the league, shall we? Ha, padoom, tush. Yeah, let's do it. One other point, of course, is that now that Norwich have lost this game, they're due to play Sheffield United in the last weekend of uh, January here. As it stands, uh, that will be going ahead. But Sheffield United play 2pm on Sunday afternoon. They host Barnet. If Sheffield United get knocked out, then, of course, the Sheffield United game here takes place. If Sheffield United go through, then that game against Sheffield United will be postponed for a presumably midweek later on in the season. Norwich will get a free weekend at the end of January and Sheffield United can enjoy their FA Cup uh, continuing journey. So that's an interesting one because, of course, it will depend when that game then gets um, rescheduled for and given what happened a couple of years ago, I mean, I'm not saying there's any bad blood, but not sure it's going to be the most easy negotiation to maybe get a, uh, something that Norwich City really want um, if Sheffield United have got a say in it, which of course they will. So it'll be maybe quite interesting where that game ends up being played too. OK, so uh, I think that's everything. Pinker.com for the fallout reaction and analysis. My words and chat with Ben Godfrey and of course Daniel Farker's reaction to Pinker.com. Until then and until next week, see you later.